With more than 50 years' experience serving South Florida, this is WTVJ NBC6 News. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, Memorial Day, May 27, 2002. I'm Bob Mayer. And I'm Tina Conkey. And for Pam Giganti, who is enjoying a well-deserved day off yes, today. Is. And it is now 4.58 on this Monday morning. And Leslie Milne is here for a look at the weather. A lot of people wondering about that, Leslie. Oh, yeah, Tina. Well, it's going to be rather unsettled. It's not going to be a great day of weather. Uh, and already this morning, we do have a few showers, mainly in South Miami-Dade. And you can see here clearly uh, moving in from the northeasterly flow pretty much on the breeze. And we also have a lot of moisture on tap, too. So, yeah, widely scattered showers and potential for some thunderstorms as well. Rolling down to the Keys now. It's mainly the upper Keys and then the the uh, water's traversing in and around the Monroe County area. And uh, look what's off to the right. Well, that's the culprit. It's so close that some moisture will drift in with the way the wind is flowing around that disturbance. It'll move away from Florida, but it will bring around more clouds with showers and storms today. Unfortunately, 86 degrees the high. I'll have more details about the rest of the week coming up. First of all, Bob Tina, back to you. All right. Thank you, Leslie. Thousands descended on South Beach for the Memorial Day weekend looking for a place to party. And while they've had a few minor incidents, unlike last year, officials say they've had no problem maintaining the peace. Michelle Kaczynski has details. Another crazy night on South Beach winds down, or we should say winds up, with more fun than fights, far more good times than bad memories. No problems. It's all easy. Everybody's getting along with us. So. Really enjoyed it. Had a blast. Saturday night, there was one unfortunate time when police had to send in their field force, the men in black, for a fight that started outside the police department. For the first time ever, they used these new crowd control guns that shoot pellets of pepper spray at one person at a time instead of an entire crowd. <laughs> they try to get them to stop fighting, keep the situation from snowballing into something that later on we're not going to have a choice but to call field force in. Some people thought the riot gear was a bit much for a small fight. It could have been done, dealt with in a better way. Go on, overall, you think it was the whole weekend was handled okay? The weekend was handled great. I mean, I have love for the miners, please. They ain't bothered me, so, you know, it's all good. I got love for you guys. What a change from last year. Even coming from the man who last year came down hard on the cops. It's going beautiful. I mean, it's going, actually, it's going better than I expected. You know, police there, and, and you know, and they're, and they're nice, and they're, you know, cordial. Overall, a great weekend, with maybe some lessons learned. This young lady is turning the tables on all those guys that was video cam. <laughs> Michelle Kosinski, NBC6. And crowds will be expected once again on South Beach later today. In fact, there are a lot of crowds out there even at this hour. You're looking at live pictures from the South Beach area this morning. You can see how many cars are down there on the uh, roadways. And, of course, police still out in full force there. Now, while some people will be heading home, others will be returning to the beach for one last chance take in the South Florida sun. Now, there were a few minor incidents, as we mentioned. There was a stabbing at club level on 12th Street and Washington Avenue. That was around 2 o'clock this morning. The victim was taken to Jackson Memorial Hospital in stable condition, and police did arrest two people. Better grab onto your morning cup of coffee for this one. A man is in jail this morning after police say he threw his baby out of the window of his car. It happened in the 33rd hundred block of Davie Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. The one-year-old was taken to Broward General Hospital. Luckily, the child suffered only minor injuries and was released a short time later. That car was parked. Meantime, his father now has been charged with felony child abuse. A part of Miami International Airport had to be evacuated after a gun was reported missing. Airport officials say just moments after an air marshal had landed, he realized he didn't have his gun, so he rushed back to the plane. Now, passengers on board that aircraft were about to take off when the marshal rushed back in looking for the weapon. We were on the plane. We were all sitting down on the plane, ready to go, and all of a sudden he comes, comes through, pushed his way past me, and asked the stewardess if they found it. Yeah. The plane's passengers and the airport concourse were evacuated while officials searched for that weapon. It turns out the gun was eventually found inside that marshal's checked baggage. Whoops. <laughs> Three minutes after the hour, 503 Palm Beach International Airport says face scanning technology will not become a part of its security system. The airport recently tested face scanning in hopes of detecting terrorists. Now, the face scan takes photos of passengers going through security checkpoints. 
then compares them in a database. However, officials say there is, in their words, some room for improvement in the technology. During some trial runs, fewer than half the test subjects were not detected when they should have been. A deadly scene unfolded in the Midwest after a barge collided with a bridge in Oklahoma, sending more than a dozen vehicles into the water. Well, now rescue crews will return to the scene looking for bodies trapped in their submerged vehicles. Reporter Alice Stewart has details. Authorities began the task of removing submerged cars, debris, and bodies from the Arkansas River, but were forced to stop due to dangerous conditions. We've got uh, strong currents. Uh, we've got uh, poor visibility in the water. Uh, we've got a lot of debris. We've got a pile of vehicles that are crumpled up laying on top of each other. A 600-foot section of the bridge fell after being hit by a barge. There was a seizure. The, the captain blacked out and hit the bridge. Witnesses say the scene was chaotic. It sounded like an explosion almost. It was so loud. Then we heard screeching and seen the traffic stopping on the interstate. It was a catastrophe. How much of a catastrophe is still unclear. Divers and emergency crews had been unable to launch an all-out recovery effort for fear that more of the bridge might come down. But they were able to begin after stabilizing the structure with a crane. Only four people came out of the water alive. People at the bridge tell me they have seen people in the cars in the water. Um, and those people, unfortunately, have not survived. The collapse also poses problems for holiday travelers. Interstate 40 is one of the main east-west arteries for traffic in the U.S. This is a 20,000 vehicle a day road, which is obviously not a sparsely populated road, and it is going to cause a lot of inconvenience. Officials say it could take at least six months to repair the bridge. Alan Stewart for NBC News. Well, the bridge collapse you were just looking at there in Oklahoma brings back horrific memories of a similar accident that happened here in Florida just a little more than 22 years ago. In Pinellas County, May 9, 1980, a freighter hit the Sunshine Skyway Bridge over Tampa Bay during a blinding storm. The accident caused a huge chunk of the skyway to collapse into the water. A string of cars and buses careened off the edge, plummeted into the bay, including a bus with 26 people on board. 35 people died in the accident. Eventually, the Skyway was rebuilt. As the search for Relia Wilson continues, the state panel investigating the missing five-year-old's case has unveiled a new plan. They're hoping the plan will improve some of the shortcomings of the Department of Children and Families. Alicia Lane has the story. DCF is underfunded, understaffed, underappreciated, and overworked. Targeting the shortcomings of the Department of Children and Families, a four-member Blue Ribbon panel unveiled the first draft of a report aimed at mending the so-called broken-down system of child welfare. I've been working in this system for over 20 years. There's nothing in these recommendations that couldn't be done. There's none of this stuff that couldn't have been done 10, 15 years ago. The governor appointed panel and the plan, inspired by public outrage over the disappearance of Rilia Wilson. Among those in the audience, DCF Secretary Kathleen Kearney, who's been under constant fire since Rilia was reported missing six weeks ago. We've learned from every tragedy. That's what we must do if we're to improve. The panel's recommendations include both long- and short-term measures, calling for things like a fully funded program, whereby every child has their own guardian ad litem, and better pay for child welfare workers. It also calls for criminal history checks of foster care families, and it focuses on community outreach, whereby the public and the media take a more active role in child welfare. Media partnerships that need to be established. I, I actually think NBC6 is starting one this week. The panel commending NBC6 for its upcoming special segments to feature foster children in need of adoption. It's that kind of initiative that we need on a more regular basis so that these kids do not linger in foster care, so that they get the community support that they need. The 26-page draft, based on strict deadlines, deadlines Secretary Kearney believes can be met. We're going to do everything that we can. It's my intent to report back to the panel and to the members of this community on what we can and what we cannot do. I personally think that Secretary Kearney should resign. State Representative Frederica Wilson argues Kearney is ill-equipped to commit to such responsibility. I think she is in over her head, and I don't think that she even realizes that she's in over her head. There would be no way that I would stand up and say that I was going to complete all of that by September 1. On Tuesday morning, an amended version of this report will go to Governor Jeb Bush for his review. That being said, the members of the Blue Ribbon Committee say they want permission to reconvene in September to assess if and to what extent their recommended measures are being put into place. 
in downtown Miami, Alicia Lane, NBC6. It is now 5.08 on this Monday morning and still ahead. Colombia's hardline anti-rebel presidential candidate is the new man in charge this morning. More on Colombia's election coming up. And a raging wildfire is burning a path across parts of the Grand Canyon state. Today in South Florida, we'll be right back. I'm Chief Meteorologist Roland Stedham. NBC6 and our Stormwatch partner, The Real Yellow Pages from Bell South, have teamed up. We're giving you one more way to get critical information when severe weather threatens. Look for hurricane tips, emergency phone numbers, a tracking map, and more inside your copy of The Real Yellow Pages. Throughout hurricane season, stay informed with NBC6 and The Real Yellow Pages from Bell South. The huge Memorial Day sale at El Dorado. Choose the greatest discounts. $200, $300, $600, $800, and even more. Or no payments, no interest for a full year. The huge Memorial Day sale till Monday at El Dorado. Childhood is an innocent time, full of promise and dreams. Each day brings discoveries and new challenges. And memories from childhood, well... They last a lifetime. To find out how you can help, call Children's Home Society of Florida today. Hello, I'm Denise Parrish from Baptist Children's Hospital. Please open your heart to a child in need. Want to save money on your phone bill? Log on to NBC6.net and click on the feed room icon for today's top stories, sports, and health segments. While you're there, click on the Super Telecom link for information on how to save money on your home, business, and internet phone line. Log on today. We spend a lot of time outdoors, so we need fast relief from rashes, skin irritations, and bug bites. We tried these creams, but Gold Bond Cream has two medicines for fast relief of pain and itch. Gold Bond Cream, medicated for fast relief. Think it's athlete's foot, but athlete's foot sprays don't work? It's probably foot dermatitis. Only new Gold Bond foot spray works on foot dermatitis. Only triple action Gold Bond has a maximum strength itch fighter, absorbs moisture, and kills odor. New Gold Bond foot spray, fast relief of everyday itch. Looking for the perfect family getaway? I come on from here. Escape to Bush Gardens, Tampa Bay, and Florida's premier water park, Adventure Island. Right now, get two days of unlimited visits to both parks for just $54.95. Call for complete Tampa Bay vacation packages. Because when it comes to your family, it's not just about getting away. It's about getting together. An important election took place in Colombia this weekend. Voters took to the polls to elect a new president. It was a choice that not only affected the beleaguered country's battle with rebel groups, but it affected South Florida as well. Bob standing by with more. Colombia has a brand new president this morning. He is Alvaro Uribe, and he is leading the election with more than 50% of the vote when his opponent conceded. Willard Shepard has details. <laughs> This is the scene in Weston on Sunday as Colombians living in South Florida came here to cast their ballots. Thousands of Colombian natives now call South Florida home, and they are making their voices heard in the presidential election that will pick the man who will try to find some way to end the almost 40-year war that is ripping Colombia apart. More than 80% of the 35,000 Colombians registered to vote in Florida turned out. Everybody's very interested in our having a new president that can uh, hopefully give us peace in our country. In Bogota, heavy security awaited those who showed up to vote in the capital. Earlier in the weekend, rebel forces set off one explosion. The outgoing president, Andres Pastrana, was barred by law from running again. He tried to make peace with the rebels trying to overthrow the government, but it didn't work and he eventually declared war on them. The hardline candidate, Alvaro Uribe, was the clear front runner. He believes the rebels, known as the FARC, should be exterminated and wants the U.S. to help him do it. He was almost killed for taking this stand, but says something must be done to bring peace and stop the violence that has made Colombia the kidnapping capital of the world. Willard Shepard, NBC6. Now, over the weekend, there were some 200,000 military police officers on hand to make sure the election and the vote counting were not disrupted. There were no reports of violence at the polling places in any of Colombia's major cities. Tina? 
Time now is 513 and still ahead here on Today in South Florida. It's been 31 years since Memorial Day was declared a national holiday. But last year's terror attacks have changed the way we'll celebrate this national holiday. And the Cannes Film Festival has come to an end. A look at who won this year's coveted prize coming up in just a bit. And you're looking at a live picture from our Skycam network, the downtown area. See all the cars leaving South Beach at this hour. Enjoying this Memorial Weekend. We'll have more on that coming up in just a little while. This week on Today. Ah, vacation, hot fun in the summertime, or so you thought. What happens when your vacation dreams become travel nightmares, getaways gone wrong, and Shakira live on the plaza only on Today on NBC. May is truck month at World Ford. For the first time ever, 2002 four-door explorers are just $2.99 a month. Yes, explore four-door with air, CD, power windows, and locks. $2.99 a month only at World Ford, Kendall and Pepper Pines. The right wine. The right place. Step into the NBC6 Wine Cellar. Every week, one expert professor, Chip Cassidy, will answer your questions and teach you everything you need to know about buying and enjoying wine. Plus, we'll show you where to go to taste our featured wines. Log on to NBC6.net and click on the Wine and Food channel to submit your questions to Professor Cassidy. The Wine Cellar, exclusively on NBC6. Brought to you by Gekakan Sake. Clear, concise, convenient. That's the new NBC6 E News. It's information you want delivered where you want it. Free. Now you're in control. With a bolder look and all the news, weather, sports, and traffic updates you need, sent directly to your home or business email address. To subscribe to NBC6 E News, just log on to NBC6.net. Come to Carl's Patio Incredible Memorial Weekend Sale. It's the sales event of the season. The style you want, the savings you want, and a selection you won't want to miss. Pay nothing, absolutely nothing for one year. The most incredible selection of distinctive outdoor home furnishings is on sale at Carl's Patio Incredible Memorial Weekend Sale. On now. Don't miss it. Your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. Only World Ford has new Explore Four Doors for just $2.99 a month. O2 Explore Four Doors, only 20% down, only 36 months, and only $2.99 a month. Only at World Ford, Kendall and Pepper Pines. Live shot from our SkyCam network, uh, Grove Cam at Cocoa Walk, where things have uh, settled down a little bit after the partying last night. Sure, that will resume once again just a little later, though. Well, in other news, a wildfire in Arizona has forced about 100 people from their homes, and many people may have to leave soon. So far, the fire has burned 12,000 acres of the Coronado National Forest near Tucson. Fire crews have contained about 50 percent of the blaze, but they fear the worst as that fire continues to grow this morning. Fire officials say the blaze has the potential to threaten at least 700 homes nearby. And if they can't keep the fire out of that area, they say it could burn out of control. Well, Leslie Milton is uh, with us now, having uh, put together an uh, interesting forecast for this Memorial Day. Uh, that's <laughs> right. Leslie, how much rain are we going to get? Well, you know what? It's going to be widely scattered, you guys. And there will be places that will be dry, and then a shower will pass through. In fact, we've already got that going on overnight in the wee hours and right now as well. Uh, in South Miami-Dade, mainly, and up in Palm Beach, there's a couple little showers right now. Also, we have reports in the Upper Keys, as you see there, and notice the direction. They're getting blown in pretty much, although the winds have calmed down significantly, for sure, and will continue to do so. Uh, they're moving through pretty quickly, and they're probably just dropping at about a quarter of an inch of wet weather. We could have a couple thunderstorms out there as well, but this isn't going to be one horrible day of weather. It will be cloudy like yesterday and a little more unsettled, and on the satellite, you can just see what's just uh, to the right of it over here, and it's a broad area of low pressure, and it's not going to move very much. Uh, it extends all the way down from the Caribbean, all the way northward to the mid-Atlantic seaboard, and you see the fanning out of clouds. Well, within this area of disturbance, there will be, for the next couple of days, some areas of low pressure that will form, and the wraparound moisture effect is what we're going to be dealing with. So uh, we're going to have the widely scattered variety, pretty much. It's not going to be a bad day of weather, but it's not going to be ideal either. And as I mentioned, today through Tuesday, uh, that's going to be the picture. You can almost see them like fingers 
moisture fingers <laughs> stretching in and trying to just tap into and uh, head along the southeast coast. So a day of cloudiness with the scattered showers and a couple of thunderstorms pretty much. Unsettled, I think it sums it up pretty good. 77 right now in Lauderdale and Key West and 78 down in Miami. Our temperatures around the country today well, uh, very surprising, actually, all the way at 70 degrees, way up into Canada. Of course, we're getting closer to summer on June 21st, a few weeks from now, uh, but still rather mild and warm all over the country. 73 for Central Park today, 84 for Washington, D.C., but right along the coast of the Northeast, unfortunately, it's going to be pretty wet in those areas as well. All right, for boaters today, small craft advisory is still in effect. However, the winds have calmed down significantly from 25 knots just a few days ago, now 10 to 15. Still 9-foot wind waves along the Gulf Stream, but 3 to 5 elsewhere, and a moderate chop at the bay. We still have the presence of rip currents with that northeasterly flow. And there is your forecast. It's not the greatest of forecasts, but it's not horrible either. So 86 degrees, clouds around. Widely scattered showers and storms, just about a 40% chance. That's through tomorrow. And then the rest of the week, we'll get those customary afternoon thunderstorms. Nothing severe, but we're just heading in that direction, of course, by calendar and our weather. By the way, you know, did you know you can get live local weather information any time of the day or night on your computer? All you have to do is log into our NBC6 weather bug. It's a free computer program, and it's available on our website, NBC6.net. Never mind. That's it. Bob, back to you. All right, thank you. 20 minutes after the hour, 520. Roman Polanski takes away one of the most coveted awards this year at the Cannes Film Festival for his work on The Pianist. He won the Palm D. Orr Award for the, uh, or the Golden Palm, I guess it's called, for his film, The Pianist. And it's about a brilliant Polish musician who manages to escape the Warsaw Ghetto. The film is loosely based on Polanski's life. He survived the Krakow Ghetto but lost his mother at a Nazi concentration camp. Polanski was born in France, but moved to Poland with his family two years before the outbreak of World War II. Wonderful night for him. Indeed. Well, time now is 5.20. Still ahead here on Today in South Florida. Memorial Day weekend usually marks the start of the travel season, but before you pack your bags, there are some travel scams you need to know about. We'll have details on that coming up in 19 and a half minutes. <laughs> exactly. Well, today is Memorial Day, and as our nation remembers those who pay the ultimate price, national security is tight. I'll tell you more about that when Today in South Florida comes right back. We may come from different cultures. We may see things in different ways. But one of the things that ties us all together is the South Florida weather. That's why the Miccosukee Tribe of Indians has partnered with NBC6 to provide the most powerful weather tool in the area. It's called First Alert Doppler 6. To all residents of South Florida, from the first residents of South Florida, we're all the same under the sky. Help, I've fallen and I can't get up. The sad truth is that one out of every three seniors will have a serious fall this year. If you or a loved one are at risk, please consider the following. In a home emergency, even if there is a phone in every room of your house, your chances of being within reach of that phone are very unlikely. You could remain helpless, on the floor, cut off from the outside world. Don't risk lying on the floor for hours or even days. These one-time emergencies can easily turn into permanent disabilities. Why risk ending up in a costly nursing facility, losing your home and independence? Life Alert can help you avert a catastrophe with this simple pendant. Push it anywhere in your home or yard in 24 hours a day, the Life Alert Security Center will summon the help you need, fast. Call 1-800-754-5003 to receive free information about Life Alert's round-the-clock 24-hour protection. The phone call and the information are free. Don't delay. Call this toll-free number now. This Memorial Day, Modern Age announces a credit offer of galactic proportions. For five days only, you'll enjoy two full years of free financing. That's 0% interest on your purchase for 24 months. Plus, with colossal markdowns throughout the store, this sale is out of this world. Never before in Modern Age's 62-year history has there been an offer like this. Modern Age, light years ahead of the competition. So how good is your dad? Would you say he's the greatest dad ever? Well, here's your chance to tell South Florida all about him. To nominate your dad, simply write a letter on why your father is the greatest dad. Then pop it in the mail, send it care of NBC6, Greatest Dad, 
or email us. If your letter is chosen, you and your dad will be featured live on NBC6 during our 4 o'clock newscast. The winning dad will be outfitted by Berdine and treated to dinner at Chili's. South Florida's Greatest Dad, presented by Berdine, Chili's, and NBC6. Closed captioning, brought to you in part by AT&T Wireless. Welcome to M Life. From all around the country, Americans have honored the memories of fallen soldiers this holiday weekend. Now, it comes at a time when many are battling the war against terrorism overseas and when security has been heightened right here in the U.S. NBC's Joe Johns has more. The nation's Memorial Day tradition. Americans paid tribute to their fallen heroes this weekend, undeterred by a week's worth of vague warnings about terrorism. At Knoxville's National Veteran Cemetery in Tennessee, scouts set out thousands of American flags to honor the soldiers buried there. All right, 24 and a half minutes after 5 o'clock, and uh, we'll try to get to the rest of that story a little bit later. Uh, some of the stories we're working on now for our next half hour. Well, what a difference a year makes. Thousands who chose to spend Memorial Day weekend here in South Florida say they are having a blast. The governor's blue ribbon panel is hoping to fix a flaw in our state's foster care system. A look at what they're planning to do is just ahead. And you're not going to believe this one. A Broward man is in trouble with the law this morning. Police say the man tossed a baby out of a car window. 25 minutes after the hour, now 525, we look at I-95 in Griffin Road. Not much traffic right now. It's going to be smooth sailing, at least for a while. We'll be right back. We spend a lot of time outdoors, so we need fast relief from rashes, skin irritations, and bug bites. We tried these creams, but Gold Bond Cream has two medicines for fast relief of pain and itch. Gold Bond Cream, medicated for fast relief. Think it's athlete's foot, but athlete's foot sprays don't work? It's probably foot dermatitis. Only new Gold Bond foot spray works on foot dermatitis. Only triple action Gold Bond has a maximum strength itch fighter, absorbs moisture, and kills odor. New Gold Bond foot spray, fast relief of everyday itch. Planning to sell your home or condo this year, you're probably wondering how much it's worth. You can find out free on the web at housevalues.com. So if you're planning to sell, visit housevalues.com today. That's housevalues.com. At Seminole Casino Hollywood, the good times just keep on rolling. And on Memorial Day, you can roll away in a brand new RAV4, courtesy of Toyota of Hollywood. Come into Seminole Casino Hollywood starting May 7th for your entry slip to win a brand new RAV4. Seminole Casino Hollywood, located minutes west of I-95 and Sterling on the corner of 441 and Sterling. Call 1-8662-CASINO for more information. Anytime's a good time for a big idea. Introducing IHOP's latest, Skillets. Five delicious skillets filled with big, bold ingredients like hearty red skin potatoes, topped with favorites like steak, ham, and bacon. A taste so big it's like nothing you've ever had before. So come into IHOP for one of our brand new skillets, starting at $4.99. And perfect for breakfast, lunch, dinner, anytime. Anytime's a good time for IHOP. The huge Memorial Day sale at El Dorado. Choose the greatest discounts. $200, $300, $600, $800, and even more. Or no payments, no interest for a full year. The huge Memorial Day sale till Monday at El Dorado. NBC6 News at 4, weekdays on NBC6. With more than 50 years' experience serving South Florida, this is WTVJ NBC6 News. Revelers from across the nation packed trendy South Beach for Memorial Weekend of Fun. Some passengers at MIA were forced to evacuate a plane over the weekend. Colombians here in South Florida went to the polls with the hopes of making change in their homeland. This is Today in South Florida, Monday, May 27, 2002. We'll look live outside our Miramar studios on this Memorial Day. Hope you're having a great one so far. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tina Conti, and for Pam Giganti, who hopefully is still sleeping at this hour. I sure one. hope you're right. And I'm Bob Mayer. Time now is 28 minutes after 5 o'clock. Let's get right over to Leslie Milne for a forecast that uh, might bother some people out there. Yeah, it might if you want to go outdoors. You want the bright sun to shine. It looks as though, Bob, we're going to see some scattered showers and a 
couple little storms tucked in there. Not a horrible day, though, uh, but certainly not ideal conditions. And right now, as we go to our first alert, Doppler 6, and as the sweep goes round, it does find a few showers out there right now in South Miami-Dade, in and around the Homestead area toward the Everglades, also up in Palm Beach. That's where we have, uh, and you can see them here once the maps are put into motion, where it's flowing in from the easterly flow due northeast to the southwest, or to the northwest, pardon me, our directions are all twisted around this morning. And we will see plenty of clouds around. The temperature is comfortable, though, uh, not too far off the mark, 77 in Lauderdale, Key West, and 78 down in Miami. Cloudy with showers and storms today, 86 the high. The reason is, and I'll show you on my next update, we've got a big disturbance just to the right or over on the east side of Florida, and that's influencing our weather today and tomorrow. I'll have that for you coming up. First, let's get outside with Karen. All right, good morning, and, you know, we'd lightly travel, but still, the uh, FHP is still out there and other officers, so really use caution. Fasten that seat belt. We've got an accident in Broward on 75 South on Sheridan Street. Vehicle spun out. As you can see, lightly traveled here in 95 at 595. But into Miami-Dade we go, and you can see that it's still a great ride if you are traveling out on the roadways. No worries for you. An accident, though, Tamiami Trail in both directions at the Palmetto Expressway. Multiple lanes are blocked there. Lots of flashing lights. Earlier crash, 75 northbound at Graham Dairy Road. Here on the Palmetto itself, though, lightly traveled. No worries for you. Overnight construction has been halted on also the Turnpike. No lanes will be constricted for any of the construction overnight through the Memorial Day holiday. Also, we have a checkpoint on the Palmetto northbound on the Palmetto at Miami Lakes Drive. Uh, officers pulling people over as well. So just use caution out there. That's the latest in traffic. More coming up in just about 10 minutes. Now back to you. Thanks, Karen. Time is 5.30 now. Thousands, make that hundreds of thousands of party goers were out on South Beach last night enjoying the Memorial Day weekend festivities. <laughs> the streets were crowded with people dancing, eating, and having a general good time. Despite a few minor incidents, it seems that keeping the peace has been much easier than last year with far fewer arrests. Overall, the weekend seemed to be a big success. Many people say they will be back next year. Let's uh, take a live look now at what's going on on South Beach. This is Washington Avenue, and you can see that some people uh, are apparently heading home. Others may be returning for some more partying. For some people, this uh, is a nonstop weekend, Tina. Aren't those people tired? Uh, you think uh, <laughs> people like us get tired, but people like they, they go they go forever. I guess. There was a stabbing, by the way, uh, the only bad uh, mark of the night at club level on 12th and Washington Avenue. About oh, 2 o'clock, about uh, three and a half hours ago, uh, the victim was taken to Jackson Hospital, said to be now in stable condition. Two people only have been arrested. In other news, a Broward man is behind bars this morning after police say he became angry with his baby, tossed the child out of a parked car. Now, it happened along the 3300 block of Davie Boulevard yesterday. The one-year-old baby was taken to Broward General Medical Center and has since been released. That's the good news. The father now faces felony child abuse charges. Reports of a missing gun prompted officials at Miami International Airport to temporarily evacuate parts of the airport yesterday. Officials say an air marshal noticed his gun was missing shortly after landing in Miami. The next flight aboard that plane he had been on was about to take off when the marshal ran back to the plane in search of that missing weapon. We were on the plane. We were all sitting down on the plane, ready to go, and all of a sudden he comes, comes through, pushed his way past me, and asked the stewardess if they found it. And the mystery deepens. Both the plane's passengers and the airport concourse were evacuated while officials searched everywhere for the gun. Where was it? The marshal had forgotten. He'd checked it in his suitcase. Whoops. Well, rescue attempts are still underway on a more serious note in Oklahoma. After about